So this morning, the title, title of the sermon is, is to let go and let God, because we had our beginning whenever we met Jesus, you know, if you made Jesus your Savior and Lord. And, and now, Jesus is coming and the wind is blowing and there's new things that he wants us to step into, new things he wants us to take, to take us to, and, and things we want to just trust God with and see him do miracles. And to do that, we're going to look at a story in Luke chapter 5, and if you're in your Bibles, you can turn to Luke chapter 5, and we're pretty much going to just camp out here for the rest of the sermon. And th this right here, Jesus, this is in the beginning of his ministry. He doesn't have any disciples yet. And for me, personally, whenever I think about Jesus, I always think of Jesus and the disciples. I think of him in that, in that frame of reference, that era. But this is before he had any disciples. And, um, and, and it says here in verse 1, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, he stood up by the lake of Gennesaret. And now check it out. He doesn't have any disciples yet, and he's already at like rock star status. You know? Like everybody knows who he is. They're, they're like, Jesus, Jesus. And, and, and you know, none of us know what that's like. But, you know, as far as a teach, back then, the teachers of the word of God were like, they were like it, you know, they, they had the fancy clothes, really, you know, I, he, he, I don't know if he did or not, but they had the fancy clothes, and he was like, whoa, it's, it's Jesus, you know, it's like, you know, who's, who's famous now, singer, I don't even know, uh, like, Bruce Springsteen, okay? <laughs> Nobody knows who he is, okay? <laughs> Whatever. So anyway, um, but Jesus, this is Jesus. And he comes in, and, and so he comes on the scene. And, and this is what he's like in verse 2. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Big job, okay? Just get the scenario. He sees the boats, and he knows everything that's going on. And the fishermen are washing their nets, and he knows what he's about to do. Verse 3, he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down, and he taught the multitudes from the boat. So Jesus, you know, he, he is this, like, amazing teacher, right? Why did he use their boat? You know, Jesus... He's like perfect. He's amazing. He can do anything. Why did he use their boat? He can walk on water. He could have pulled out his, I can, you know, superstar, walk on, I can walk on water card. Yeah, my name is Jesus. I can walk on water. And then, you know, and imagine what the people would have done. Whoa, you know, I mean, if he walked on water, I mean, it makes sense to most worldly people, right? He didn't because Jesus one thing about him, he always likes to do things in community. He always likes to do something that involves other people. He doesn't do things solo. The body of Christ, and, and as our example, he was our example, the body of Christ is community. And as we step into the next things that God has for our church, it's going to be in community. Amen. You know, even... Uh, our community, it's an expression of, you know, God himself is community. Amen. He's a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's a community. We're an expression of that. Amen. You know, and, and this is something, myself included, this is something I'm preaching to myself, it's something we need to break away from because the world, it, it, it's like, if you can be better than the other person, you can take the reins and then, then you'll be on top, you know? And, and you just kick everybody else to the side and you're going to get the job or whatever. And that is so wrong, you know, with the world, uh, the measure of your, you know, like the measure of your metal is the measure of your me. But in the kingdom of God, it's the measure of your we. And, 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 and so, so Jesus got into the boat of Simon Peter, you know, and it's probably rock, you know, rocking and everything and. You know, did you ever stand up in a boat? I don't, I don't know how big the boat was. Maybe it was big enough. It wasn't rocky. But anyway, he chose to involve this man. And we'll find out more about this man in a little bit. So verse 4, we're going to read 4 and 5. 
When, he, when Jesus had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your net down for a catch. And check it out. The Bible doesn't even record anything he said. I mean, he just said the word of God. He just said amazing things. But that's not the focus here. So he said, uh, he said, let down your net. And Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Jesus was the superstar preacher, right? Jesus was known as that. Maybe to some people he was known as an awesome woodworker because this is still early in his ministry and we know he was a carpenter, so I imagine he made amazing furniture. So he's known as Jesus the teacher, but he, wasn't known, he was known as Jesus the carpenter to a few, but he was not known as Jesus the fisherman to anyone. And so here's Peter, like, you want me to do what? You know, like if, um, who's, kids, help me, who's a famous singer today? If Justin Bieber comes up to you, think about it, and he tells you how to, to fish, what are you going to think about Justin Bieber? You know, Jesus wants to get into the boat of every area of your life. And what he asked Peter to do, he asked him to launch out in the deep and, and cast his nets, it's not something different than he had already been doing. If, if you're looking for the quick fix, the secret sauce, the new recipe, it's probably not going to come from God. What he's asking you to do is not try something different, but he's asking you to go and try it again, but expect different results. You know, things we've tried even as a congregation, you know, we tried to try, you know, hey, the, the basic things sometimes they, they work, but th they only work when we expect, you know, okay, we're going to try this again, and this time, Jesus, you're in our boat, and we're trying, not, not that we weren't in faith, I mean, I'm not talking about anything specific, but I'm just saying, you know, whatever you're doing personally, you know, um, let's expect different results because it's through faith in Him that grace meets that faith and makes the manifestation. So Peter says, nevertheless, at your word, okay? And when you're fully committed like that, you know, he, he was, okay, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going, here we go. We're going to, I just spent all this time cleaning my nets after all night long being out there. You want me to do the same thing in, I don't know much about fishing on the Sea of Gennesaret, but probably it was better fishing hours when Peter went. That's why he was there. And, and so now it's after the good hours to fish and he, I'm going to do the same thing and, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it at your word. I'm going to do it, and, and I'm going to expect different results. And so he does it. And we know he was going to expect different results. Why? Because he did it. Because he went out. Maybe his, I'm sure his mind was like, oh, what the heck, you know. And he was a sailor, and we know, and we're going to find out in a second, that he, he, he wasn't the most pristine person. So he's cussing under his breath. His, his helpers are cussing, you know. And... Uh, um, to him, cussing is another word for saying bad words. Okay, he's learning English. Um, all right. And, and, and so I want him to understand everything. <laughs> so, so the thing is, Jesus says, go out and cast Peter, cast your net again. That was Peter's thing. That was Peter's livelihood. What is your net? What is that thing that's empty, that's been empty for a while, you know, you're cleaning it, and it needs to be filled? What is the place in your life that's purposed for something greater, but is currently out of commission? What's the talents or ability that's sitting on the shelf? Give it to God. Listen to His instructions. You know, maybe it's the same thing you've been doing. Maybe not, you know. Listen and then cast it into the deep. 
get your hand, get, get the net, cast it, right? I don't know if you can see in here. You, you can't really see it. In the background, there's a picture of a net being cast. But, but cast it, get that thing out of your hands that you're holding on to, trying to figure out, get it out of your hands and into his hands. Stop pretending like you're the best thing that ever happened to you. And let God be God. And let go and let God. Put your faith in the one who can walk on the waters that you fear, who can calm the storms that you dread, who can heal a chronic illness, who can resurrect dead dreams. Because, you know, he gave you those dreams. They're real. I, I spent so many years of my life in, in, thinking it's just, oh, it's just some thing, you know, some weird dream. No. Those dreams God put in you. Take it and throw it in the deep because God is waiting there. Yes. It won't return void. Amen. It will prosper in the thing it, it was sent. It won't return void and you'll be overwhelmed by grace. Yes. Jesus, for Peter, in this situation, right, he didn't bring enough fish in his net. He brought overwhelmingly more than enough. So, do you come with empty hands? Um, this is a big thing. This is a big thing for me. Every morning, do you wake up with empty hands saying, God, put something in my hands today? Or do you wake up with your hands full of yesterday, with holding on to what you didn't do right, holding on to um, this thing that I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying in my own strength? A little bit of that pain, a little bit of that burden, a little bit of those things that hold you to the shore Verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Okay, um, and in verse 7, they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help, and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. God will arrive with such grace that it has the power to sink you, to flood you with such goodness that the way of living you have grown comfortable with, Jesus is going to rock that boat. So proceed with caution and it will be glorious. Verse 8. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Okay, first of all, Jesus already knew this about him. Right? I mean, you know, he was a sinful man. Now, now check this out. I said, I said a second ago that there's going to be such grace that it has the power to sink your to sink your boat, to flood you with such goodness that the way of living you've grown comfortable with is no longer, it, it, it can't be anymore. Imagine Peter, he just got this huge catch. Now, to, to understand the size of the catch, um, fishermen go out expecting a catch. So if you have a good catch, that's normal, all right? But this was so overwhelming. It was like so good. I don't know what it would be for you. Something like, I don't know, winning $30 million in the lottery or, or having, I don't know, your song that you wrote being played in every church in every country or getting the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl or, or curing somebody of, a, of AIDS or curing, finding the cure for cancer. I don't know what it could be for you. But for Peter, it was such goodness that it, he, 
he, he it, it, br like most people would be like, yeah, I got the fish. Look at the fish. Awesome. Look, fish. I'm going to have so much money for so long. My wife, my kids, all of us, we're going to build this big house. We're going to have us, you know, I can pay all my back taxes, which they're trying, you know. Um, no, but you know what I'm saying? Most people would be like, all about the fish, all about the fish. This happens to Peter, and Peter says, I am, he, he breaks down, I am a sinful man. Imagine that. It's totally, it totally broke his goodness, totally like, like Peter could care less about the fish. It was the greatest thing in the natural to, for a fisherman at that time to ever experience, and he couldn't care anything about it. And and, and, and um, it, it, read verse 9. He and all who were with him were astonished at the catch which he had taken. What would it take to astonish you? What kind of dream come true would have to happen for you to move, to recognize the areas of your own sin that you never saw before? Now, we're righteous in Christ. You know, we are, we are clean. But sin, I'm not saying like as a sinner, but the areas where we miss it. Areas where we make mistakes. Patterns where we do the same thing, you know, over and over again. Areas where we're broken. You know, maybe tendency to lose your cool. Tendency to be quiet whenever you feel like you should step out. Tendency to look at your symptoms rather than looking at the Word of God. What would it take to astonish you, to make you feel gutted to the core, where all you would do is just break down? If he did just that one thing, you know, like, if, he, if God, if you did this, then I'd fully be yours. You know, but really, he is surrounding you with miracles today. He has this past week. He's surrounded you with miracles already. Look at verse 10. And so also were James and John, okay, astonished at the catch, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. Okay, don't be afraid. Afraid of what? Simon just heard Jesus preach, right? Don't be afraid. I don't know. This whole new concept, the first shall be last, last shall be first. All the, you know, Jesus taught a lot of things that were different than, than the way it is in the world, right? Um, don't be afraid of letting go of your job. Don't be afraid of letting go of your education. Don't be afraid of go, letting go of all your experience. Don't be afraid of letting go of, of, of your pride. Don't be afraid of letting go of your family, you know, like that house you're about to build. Emptying yourself of everything and trusting in Him to fill you. And it's good when He fills you. Verse 11. So when they had brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed Him. Peter, think about what they did. And think about that moment, all of that that happened that day. That first verse we read, you don't have to put it up, but the wind of the Holy Spirit moves to and fro. You can hear the sound of it. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. And what I'm saying is, is as our church moves forward, we've heard it prophesied. Uh, the, um, John Gray, a uh, man of God, prophesied over J Pastor James that what he expected in 10 years was going to be in three. So that means for all of us, things are going to change. Amen. There's going to be things happening. There's going to be things where, and it could just be you personally on, on the job. You know, whatever it is, each of you, each of us are a part. And, and, and we bring a supply. We're, we're, we're a part of the, of the body of Christ. And so in going back to Peter, in this moment, Peter sa Jesus says to him, don't be afraid, Peter, for you're going to be fishers of men. Peter followed Jesus. However, Peter was an inch away from missing a life he could manage all by himself. From a future that he could fit into a box. 
He was a micro, microscopic distance from a future that's void of abundant life. Wow. Peter, at that moment, he could have, he could have said, ah, forget about it, I got the fish. You know, he could have thought, oh, all these things. He could have. But God's reality can't fit into your natural world. It was never about the fish, but in trusting in Jesus more. Discovering a new reality right in front of your eyes already. Like, like I said, maybe not doing anything different. Just doing it, expecting different results. We can, when we come to terms with our inability, our inability to reach our hopes, dreams, and desires, when we finally have the kind of faith that allows God to save us, deliver us, and fill us, in laying down, in lay, in when we have that, in laying down everything and going for seeing that life of more, seeing that thing that we've been afraid of, but seeing it, recognizing we've been afraid of it because we've seen it without Jesus in the boat. And so my encouragement this week, what would it be like, okay, most of us know where where our brokenness is or where, our, where we put the brakes on, okay? And, and most of it, it's like we, without even thinking about it, we, we do it just out of habit. And so what could you do this week to, 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 to revisit each of those situations with Jesus in your boat? Okay, for parents that have children, it could be like, you know, they're disobedient, okay? Stop. Okay, I'm about to freak out, but I'm not going to. Jesus is in the boat. Okay, what's next? You know, you get a bill. Jesus is in the boat. You get a cough. Jesus is in the boat. And sometimes, you know, that's that process of going out to the deep. Okay, Cassie and I, you know, Not that everything's going to happen instantaneously. And maybe you can go a little bit further. Maybe you can go a year down the road. Maybe you can go five years down the road for that dream and, and, and picture that dream. Is that worth it? If you can imagine what it would be like to have Jesus having fulfilled that dream that he's given you in your heart, and, and only you know what it is between you and God, would it be worth it five years from now, have, having gone after it? It's faith in him, faith, faith in the word, and then bam, he meets it with the grace and it manifests. And I'm just going to close with one testimony. Um, yesterday, a girl, her name was Jessica, she was 20 years old and she shared her testimony. From the time she was two years old, I think, uh, they, they found out she had type 1 diabetes. Um, this is yesterday. Uh, whenever we were at the, the event, um, she, she shared this with the whole group. She had type 1 diabetes. And um, beginning at six years old, some, she ate something and it got really out of control. And I think from the ages of, of six to, to 17, she had to give herself, in, she, well, whenever she was younger, her parents did it. Whenever she got to be like 13, 12, 13, 14, she started to do it herself. She had to give herself injections six to eight times every day of her life, okay? Because her insulin would go up, and if, if you have diabetes, it's a disease, and your blood sugar goes up, and, and whenever that happens, um, it, I don't know, you, can, you get real hyper or something. Whenever it goes down, you can't even move. She said, she said, like, you would sit there, and you literally, you couldn't lift up your arm, nothing. And, um, and she lived like this. And she was in a Christian family and, and that believes like we do and believes the word of God. And but she lived with it pretty much all of her life. So she said, you know, I'm just going to live like this, get through with this. And then she ended up going to Rama, Rama Bible Training Center, um, um, which is the training center that uh, many, of, many have gone and um, where, our, where our church is associated with Rama Ministerial Association. 
And whenever she's there, she's going to these healing meetings every day where they're teaching the Word of God about healing. And one day, uh, oh, and at this time, she no longer had to give the injections because they, nowadays they've invented this machine that automatically injects her all day long. So the machine monitors her glucose levels, and whenever it gets higher or lower, it, it will automatically inject her. So she goes, and, 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 and this day, uh, she just felt like God said, today's the day. She comes up for prayer. It, it, you know, today's the day. Come out on the water. Yes. Cast the net. You know? And she probably had been prayed for 100, 200, 300 times. You know? I mean, you've had this since you were two, right? And your parents go to a church like ours. But she felt like her faith was finally there in today's the day. She walks up and she gets prayed for. <laughs> And she said she just felt the power of God in her life so strong. And it was awesome. You know, the wind blows to and fro. We don't hear the sound of it, but it does. And, it's, and, and the thing that she felt like God tell her was, is, I want you to be healthy because you're my body. And, and, and he said, I love you and I want you to be healthy. And as part of my body, you're supposed to be healthy because you're supposed to stand before other people as my example and show them that, that you're healthy. You know? And that goes for all every area, emotionally, mentally. Just a healthy whole person. Amen? That's what God wants for, for you and for me. And Lord, we thank you for, as our Father, we thank you for doing that. So here she does, she goes up and she gets this experience. And, 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 and she gets up, okay, she goes home, and she still had the thing on her. And the next morning, she looks at the machine, and it's off. She doesn't even know how to turn the thing off, okay? It doesn't, like, go off or whatever. And so it must have been off. She, this is what she said. She said she believes the power of God was so strong, it shut the machine off. She goes, she goes home, the next, she gets up the next morning, and she's like, well, it's not on. So she took it off. And she's responsible. She went to the doctor, and the doctor says, well, she gives him these tests, and, they, and she's like, I don't believe this. The doctor said, I don't believe this, or the nurse, whatever. And, and she says, okay, come back tomorrow. She tests her again. Come, come back in three days. She tests her again because she's been doing this all of her life. Okay? And, and I think they made her come back for tests. Was it six months or a year? I forget. Maybe a year. A whole year. They made her keep because, you know, if, like, if it goes, she could die, you know, if your blood sugar. The doctors had her come back for a whole year, and for a whole year... Jessica, who we met yesterday, who lived her whole life like this, the nurse said, Jessica, I still don't believe it, but you are healed completely. And they told her, you never have to come back again. Never. And that was two years ago. So for the past two years, Jessica is normal. She's like, and she said, you know, you kids don't understand I go to your birthday party, I go to my own birthday party, I can't, she couldn't eat the cake. She never could have sweets her whole life because it would cause her levels to spike and, and, and go over the place. She, and she's like, you know, today I just ate all this food and I just ate this um, Rice Krispie treat and everything and here I am uh, and, I'm, and, and, I'm, and I'm doing and I'm healthy and, and and here I am, and I'm a God's example. And then she's like, here, and I'm going to pray for you. And people came up for prayer for her, and she laid hands on people, and, and it was awesome. And people fell out in the power of God for healing. And, um, and, and so, so that's her testimony. And, you know, it's real. This girl was diseased all of her life, and miraculously, in a moment, it wasn't even gradual for her, she was healed by the power of God. And so God wants us this morning to recognize what it is, cast our nets, go out into the deep, but with Jesus on the boat. 
listen for his instructions. You know, he told Peter, go out in deep, he, whatever it is. Um, somebody told me, it was at camp, one of the speakers said, if you have a problem, you have the Holy Spirit. Find out how, how to solve it. You know, God's got your answer. You, you, you take the responsibility. Those of you who are more, more mature, you take the responsibility, pray, find out your answer, listen to God and do it. And, and so, so let's just pray. Lord God, we thank you that this morning you have an answer. You have our solution, Lord. Lord, just as Peter was, was, was picking the grime out of his net, you knew everything about him as you looked at him from a distance. And Lord, maybe there's nets that we've been picking, things we've been trying to figure out, things that we've been trying to make happen and they haven't, ha they haven't happened yet. And, and, and God, we ask you to be daddy in our life, be father, be teacher, blow your spirit's wind into our, our nets, our lives, and, and show us your instructions, we pray, Lord, so that we may launch into that, dark, that deep place. Lord, it might even be a dark place for some of us, but, but to launch it. And it doesn't matter how dark it is, God, because Jesus, you are the light of the world. And, and we thank you that whenever place we're in, with your light, you illuminate everything and we ask you to illuminate us so that we can see clearly, hear, and cast our net, expecting, and by your grace, we thank you ahead of time that you're going to fill it. And so, Lord, we just, we just commit this to you, and let's just, let's just wait here for a second and just take this time with God and make it personal. Okay, let's just lift our hands to God and say, Lord, my hands are open. There's nothing in it from yesterday. There's no fears or regrets or successes that would trap me in pride. My hands are empty. Put in my hands what I need, what I need. To, enter in to enter in to the dream, the dream. that you have placed you have place. in, me. in me. No matter how big or how small. Jesus, you're in my boat. Jesus, and I thank you, and I thank you for, bringing your light. for bringing your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.